Our current grow is in the middle of the flowering phase and is basically on autopilot. So this week, I decided to revisit the topic of EC and PPM as we had some questions arise from our watering and nutrients video about this. So here's a deeper dive into EC, PPM, and why you should use one over the other. I'm Dr. Judd with Green Cert MD. Let's get into it. So this video is going to get rather technical. Before we start to make people's heads hurt, I did want to tell all of our new viewers, welcome. We're glad you're here. Please take a minute to click like, smash that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content. To all our viewers who have been helping with comments and shares to break us out of the shadow ban our digital overlords have placed on us, I really appreciate your help, and it would mean the world to me for you to keep it up, because indicators are that it's working. Also, this video is for educational purposes, and it's basically about chemistry and math, so YouTube, you should be okay with it. There's nothing age inappropriate about science and mathematics. EC stands for electrical conductivity, and PPM stands for parts per million. We're going to start with electrical conductivity first. Electrical conductivity is the measure of salinity, or the amount of salts in a solution. The term salts describes ionic compounds, which consist of positively charged cations and negatively charged anions. Pure water that contains no salts does not conduct electricity. Water, as we know it in the real world, however, usually does conduct electricity because it's full of impurities. They may be contaminants already present in the water from your tap, or the ones we deliberately added in the form of nutrients. The units this is measured in is millisiemens per linear centimeter, or ms slash cm. So this means that the higher the EC, the more charged particles, in our case nutrients, in a solution. Keep in mind that organic molecules, like proteins and urea, do not conduct electricity and are not measured by EC. EC is only measuring those particles which can conduct electricity, such as calcium, potassium, chloride, phosphorus, magnesium, etc. This is convenient for us because these are generally the nutrients that we are trying to provide for our plants. PPM, or parts per million, refers to the concentration of the particulates in your feeding solution. This includes everything that's in that water whether minerals or contaminants found in the tap water, natural elements found in your nutrients, which are not the beneficial part, or the actual nutrient components which we're trying to feed the plant. PPM is a dimensionless quantity and are pure numbers with no associated units of measurements. So this is the crucial difference between these two. EC is something which can be measured using a meter which passes a current through a solution from one probe to the other, and it is a unit of measurement that is standardized internationally. So EC in Europe is the same as EC in Asia, which is the same as EC in the US. This means there is no confusion related to EC numbers when they are derived using a properly calibrated measurement device. PPM, on the other hand, cannot be truly determined in a liquid without evaporating the liquid off and chemically analyzing the remaining elements in the residue. This kind of defeats the purpose of measuring this in a solution, so methods were derived to convert EC measurements to PPM based on a few scales. The most commonly encountered scales are the PPM 500, PPM 650, and PPM 700 scales. The two we usually care about in growing are the 500 and 700 scales. The PPM 700 scale is based on measuring the potassium chloride content of a solution. The PPM 500 scale is based on measuring the sodium chloride content of a solution. This 500 PPM scale is also referred to as TDS, or total dissolved solids, hence the term TDS meter we all usually started with from our local grow shop. So again, the true PPM of a solution can only be determined by chemical analysis and cannot be measured in solution. We get around this by using a meter to measure the electrical conductivity and then convert that to the desired PPM scale by multiplying EC by 500 or 700 respectively. And this is where the confusion really sets in, like you weren't totally confused already. Because we have multiple scales, 
we have multiple conversions. So using a 500 ppm scale, an EC of one is 500 ppm, two is 1000 ppm, etc. However, when we use a 700 ppm scale, an EC of one is 700 ppm, and an EC of two is 1400 ppm, etc. So when you see a book or a web article which says you should grow your crop at 1000 ppm, how do you know which scale the writer is referring to? In the US, we tend to use the 500 ppm scale, but in the UK or Europe, it generally would be the 700 ppm scale. In Australia, it could be any of the three. To illustrate this confusion, I pulled this chart from a European seed company. This chart lists both ppm and EC. They list HANA as the unit for ppm. I'm not sure why. Uh, and when you go looking for this online, the only references I could find were forum posts which suggested that HANA meters, and HANA is a company like Blue Lab that makes EC meters, are set in a 700 ppm scale. But you can clearly see here that this is a 500 ppm scale based on the EC numbers next to it. Similarly, this house and garden feed chart I found online from Australia clearly demonstrates a 700 ppm scale conversion, whereas the US chart from house and garden doesn't even have ppm listed on it. Finally, I found a website which discussed in detail using ppm for grow, but never defines which scale they are using. So the takeaway message here is that many of us, myself included, were taught when we first started growing to use measurements in the form of ppm. Here in the US, that was based on the 500 ppm scale, even though I didn't even know there was another scale that it could have been based on. Only after growing for a few years did I learn to use EC, as EC is the international standard and it is actually what you are measuring with your handheld meter. Using EC avoids confusion as we increasingly share information about growing globally, and it's just the better option, at least in my opinion. Most quality meters today will provide all of the above measurement values and conversions if desired. I recommended Blue Lab products, and I now recommend HANA Growline products as well. I did briefly want to touch on the meter I used in this video, which is the HANA Instruments Growline Series Waterproof Portable PH-EC-TDS meter. Followers of our channel know that I featured the Blue Lab pins earlier in the series, and I still have those, but I picked this guy up because it was an all-in-one unit that displayed both EC and pH at the same time, along with temperature, and it also has a detachable and replaceable probe. I have to say I am a big fan of having both measurements simultaneously on screen and no longer needing to switch between pins to evaluate both measurements. So there you go, more than you ever probably wanted to know about EC and PPM. I hope this wasn't too confusing, and if you found this video helpful, please like and share the video with others, and drop us a comment below to help the algorithm and let us know if you'd like more technical videos like this, or what other topics you'd like to see us cover here as we bring our current grow to completion over the next few months. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon, where you'll have access to our expert growing team to assist with your grow, as well as special deals and announcements on products we offer, which might be located somewhere within the camera shot. So that's it for now, and until I see you again, puff puff and pass it on. Our current grow is in the middle of autoflower. Our current grow is in the middle of flower. Our current grow is currently... Tards. EC is something which can be measured using a meter. <sighs> Yawny yawn.